I'll tell you, you know, when uh, sometimes your heart's heavy and you come in and they just begin to sing and, and uh, it just like all of a sudden you raise your hands again and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm here today. I thank you that you're touching me today, Father. And that's what uh, I felt this morning and I appreciate it. <clears throat> I, uh, let me open in prayer this morning. Father, I need your help this morning, Father, to bring forth this word. I'm asking you, Father, that you help me. Take over my mind, Father, that I'll think your thoughts, and, and then, Father, take over my mind that I'll speak your words. And, Father, then help us to have hearts that this word could lodge in. Father, we just ask you to, to be with us today. We ask, I ask you to touch each and every person that's here this morning somehow, Lord. Encourage them. Father, just uh, cause them to uh, be in a different frame of mind when they go out of this church than when, maybe when they came in, Father. We just ask for your presence in Jesus' name. I've, I've been... Uh, thinking this week you know it seems like everyone in the church just like seems like everybody's having something that they're uh, not just little problems but big things that they're dealing with big issues and and so uh, you know I thought I, I really would like to minister today some type of uh, uh, encouragement to everyone in the church to just try to encourage them and and uh, I, I got to say, I wish I just had some scripture or something that would just blow you away, but I don't, but I, I'm just going to try my best this morning to, to bring you some word maybe that will uh, uh, help you to be encouraged, that will, uh, uh, you know, I remember one time in, in, uh, I'd reached a point and uh, I got up in the morning and I said, God, I need a touch from you today. You know, you ever get to the point where you just got a heavy load and you just need a lo that load lightened a little bit. And, and I was, uh, it was early in the morning and I was walking out to the car when I said that. I, it was actually just about daylight and I said, God, I need your help today. And, and uh, I went up to a gas station to get gas and they had this uh, big display rolled out there with clocks on it. And uh, I tell you, I can see it yet today, just like it was yesterday. I walked up there, and there was this clock, and it was storming. And there was this guy on the boat trying to keep his boat, you know, on the, on the water, trying to keep it up. And, and up here in the clouds, there was just a, when God was pointing down, and there was just one little ray of sunlight getting through the cloud down to the man on the boat. And when I walked up there and seen that, I threw up my hands and I said, I thank you, God, I can make it today. Because that was a word to me right then and there. That no matter what kind of storm is coming your way, no matter how cloudy it gets, God can still have that little ray of sunlight coming down to you. Amen. And I tell you, some days you need God's little ray of sunlight just hitting you especially especially for you today and, and somehow today I'm hoping that God uh, lets his sun shine on you today and encourages you somehow some way lifts you up and picks you up and when you go out of here I want you to be in a different frame of mind than when you came in hallelujah I want you to be encouraged and know that no matter where I go that God will be with you and and that he will see you through. So anyways, I, I, you know, it seemed like all week I was trying to, to come up with uh, scriptures and everything. And it just seemed like I was having a really hard time. And finally, it's like this thought came to me. That when we're compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. And I thought, wow. That says it all. And so I want to go to Hebrews this morning and, and I'm hoping that this will, will speak to each and every one of you today somehow. 
I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm kind of starting this backwards, I guess, but uh, we want to, I want you to be encouraged this morning. <clears throat> Wherefore, chapter 12, I want to read verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It seems like I'm having a hard time keeping my mind. I had the, the, the thought that I wanted to share with you. You know, sometimes, church, life can be heavy. You can face a lot of uh, situations. You, you, I remember back when I got my hand hurt, and uh, I'll tell you, to be honest about it, I lived to get through one day at a time. It wasn't no looking forward, you know, planning and saying, well, you know, next week I'll do this or next, next day I'll do that. But it was just trying to get through one day at a time. Just trying to get through that day. Because uh, you didn't know what was, what was going to happen. You didn't know how you was going to get through it. And, and you know, I was thinking uh, about a, the scripture about Lazarus. And it said that he was a beggar. And uh, you know, at that time, I shared just yesterday that, uh, you know, that I was having to go to Louisville and everything, and, and like I said, I was just trying to get through one day at a time. And the uh, engine blew up on my truck, and I literally had to go to somebody and ask them if they could give me some money. And uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't just really asking to borrow it, because I didn't know if I would ever be able to pay it back. And uh, I told him, I said, hey, I need this much money to fix my truck. And uh, I said, I don't know if I can pay you back or not. And i never forget, the man went in, wrote me out a check for the amount of money I needed. You know, I thought, I never considered myself a beggar before, but I thought, you know, I was actually begging him to help me. Amen? When you're asking somebody to, to help you, that's a form of begging, isn't it? No, I wasn't sitting outside in front of the church or something and, and had my cuff and doing that, but I was asking for help. And I, I was in a position where I needed his help. And I was, I'd have to say I was begging, begging for help. And so, sometimes in life, church, it can get heavy and it can get hard. But I'm here to tell you today, I want to go back and, you know, wherefore seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. And we're going to go back and we're going to read some about the witness, of uh, these witnesses and what they went through and, and how they, uh, you know, I was thinking here the other day, I thought, God, if you'd just give me a word, I, I know what the... You know what I was facing. I know which direction to go. Sometimes, isn't it sometimes when you're in them positions, the, the uncertainty of where you're going and, and how, what's going to happen, it's the uncertainty and, and all of that that, that uh, gets, uh, that's what's so heavy. And I thought, God, if you just give me a word and take away this uncertainty. But then I began to think, I thought, you know what? If God would have to speak to me to take away the uncertainty, it wouldn't be by faith. 
It would not be by faith anymore. It would be God would have to take away that and I wouldn't have to walk in faith. And I want you to know today, church, that sometimes in this life, if you want to serve the Lord and you want to grow with the Lord, sometimes you're going to have to walk in faith. Without faith, the scripture declares, without faith it is impossible to please God. So sometimes we're just going to have to have faith in God. And, and church, it's like... Sometimes God takes us through these places and these hard times so that our faith can grow. Listen, I'm telling you, you don't know what God's got for you in the future. You don't know how much faith you might have to have. And God may be preparing you right now today for the future that you're going to face. And He's building your faith by taking you through some of these trials and tests. He's building your faith so that uh, uh, when the time comes, you'll be able to, to stand like these great cloud of witnesses stood. Amen. I want to go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And I want to read uh, verses 22 through 23. Let us draw near with true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us draw near with a pure heart and in full assurance of faith, I want to say to you today, church, that, you know, I've told my kids this and I kind of almost wish I hadn't because they always bring it back to me. But, uh, you know, I, I say, how do you eat an elephant? How do you eat an elephant? That looks impossible, doesn't it? You think about eating an elephant, that looks impossible. But the answer is one forkful at a time. One forkful at a time. Listen, church, I'm telling you, sometimes you just have to live one day at a time. Just one day at a time. Just get through that day. Amen? One day at a time sometimes. I'm here to tell you it may not be that way always, but there are times in your life when it's one day at a time. Just a struggle to get through that one day. And I want you to know it can be done. I want to go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verses. I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture this morning because I feel like scripture is saying it way better than I can. You know, when Doug was leading worship, I thought, you know what? He could just about preach that, couldn't he? He was doing a really good job, and I thought, hey, I think I could just about listen to Doug preach this morning. I appreciated that, Doug. I want to go to uh, verse 32, and I'll read to 39. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions to them that were so used. For you had compassion on me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Not a just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe in the saving of the soul. He said, But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were eliminated, illuminated, you endured a great flight of afflictions. I believe that what that's speaking about is is after after you've come to the place where you begin to know the Lord and you, you have light shed in your life, it's after you are illuminated, after you, you've come to a place where you know that God is, is with you. How I many know sometimes you... It, listen. There's a lot of people that preach that after you come to God, all your problems are done away with. That you don't have no more problems. <coughs> I'm going to tell you sometimes that's when your problems just start. But it's, it's when you come to God and your problems begin to come, you have someone you can lean on. Leaning on Jesus. And you have someone that cares about what you're going through. You have someone that, that's looking out after your welfare. And so sometimes it's in them them great flights, fights of affliction that we begin, uh, you know, I was telling somebody here the other day, it's when I really need God to work in my life that I call on Him the most. I've noticed that in my life, that when, you know, when things are going good, it's not so much that I don't think about God, it's not so much that I don't, I still serve God when things are going good, but I'll tell you one thing, when things are, when things are, uh, uh, when there's a great battle going on within you, that's when you go to God the most. That's when you begin to seek God the most. Amen? If you think I'm not telling you the truth, you look back on your life and you'll see that I'm telling you the truth. Now I want to kind of share with you this morning, this this is not a story, this is the truth. Sometimes in your walk with God, you're going to have to have bulldog mentality. And what I mean by that is you're just going to have to latch on and hang on. Sometimes in your life you'll come to that place. We, had, The church I was going to at, at one time, we had a young couple in that church. And they... Uh, the wife was expecting a baby, and uh, they went to the doctor one day, and the doctor told him, said, the baby's dead, and we want to go in and, and clean, clean you out, and uh, said, the, the baby's dead. Now, I don't know what or how gave that young couple the faith. But I remember his wife saying, that baby's not dead. And I'm not going to let you go in and clean me out. Because that's, that would be uh, an abortion, basically. I'm telling you, that baby was not dead. And he's still alive today. A young man. He's about, one, about the age of, of some of my kids. So he's probably around 30 years old now. That baby would not have been born had not somehow that young couple got faith and believed in God. I don't know. I'm just trying to tell you sometimes the things that you're going through, the things that you're facing, sometimes you just got to hang on to God. You just got to hang on. You got to get a grip and stay there. I want to go to also go to uh, Hebrews in chapter 11. And I'm going to read uh, pretty much the 
the, basically the whole chapter there, because this is telling us about the great cloud of witnesses that we, uh, you know, we talked about. We're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. And chapter 11 is the, is the chapter that's given us this great cloud of witnesses. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. <clears throat> God testifying of his gift, and by it being, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he, had, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he con condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Noah, <coughs> remember he built the boat? But there's another thing that before that, before that rain, it hadn't rained on the earth. The earth was watered by a mist, and it was not rained as we know it today that watered the earth. It was so. Not only was Noah having to build his boat, but he was having to build. He was having to build his boat without knowing what rain was. Amen. Now you think that didn't take some faith? He had never seen rain before in his life. How, how do you think you'd feel about this? If you had never seen rain before in your life and all of a sudden God says, I want you to build this boat. And it's not just a little boat either. I mean, this is a thing that's a huge undertaking. And it takes years and years to do it. And God's saying, I want you to do this because rain is going to flood the earth. Well, I don't know what rain is. I've never seen it before. You think that didn't take some faith? No wonder they call him a, a great cloud of witness. Amen? Because he was a great cloud of a witness. He, he, he believed God, even though he didn't understand it all. There's no way possible he could have understood what rain was. And God's saying, build this boat. I got to tell you, There's some people going to think you're a little loony, you know. Amen? Noah starts building the boat and everybody's coming by. Noah, what are you doing here? Well, I'm building the boat. Uh, God told me to build a boat. It's going to rain. And, and you, need to, you need to give your life to the Lord. Because uh, this rain's going to come and, and you're going to be destroyed. And ha ha, Noah, what are you talking about? It's never rain. I don't even know what rain is. What is a flood? I want to tell you something. Noah kept doing what God told him to do. And many of them people that made fun of Noah for building his boat, when the time came, they would have loved to have been in that boat. Amen? They would have loved to have been in that boat. Sometimes, in your walk with God, you're going to have to endure some things. You're going to have to endure some hardness sometimes. But the wonderful thing is that God has not left you. He's not forsaken you. He's not... Uh, uh, cast you aside. Listen, more than anything else, He's still your friend. God is still your friend. You may be going through some hard times. You may be facing some things that you don't know how, to, uh, how it's going to end. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. But I'm going to tell you this. 
Hey man, that uh, uh, if if everything keeps going wrong and you're still uh, saved and you still keep your faith in God and and, uh, and the end of your life comes, uh, you may give up this world, but at least you're going to go on and be with Abraham in Abraham's bosom. You're going to be caught away with God. And uh, what difference does it make if all this stuff that you're facing in this earth is hard and hard and hard and gets harder. If I keep my faith in God, it'll be worth it all someday. Because someday you see this world is going to be over. Someday, you know, yesterday I used this verse that it's appointed once unto man to die. It's a, you have an appointment that you're going to keep at some point, someday you're going to keep that appointment and you're going to die. But there's another appointment in that same verse and that is after that comes judgment. You're going to keep that appointment too. Two appointments in this life that you're going to keep. You know, some people... It don't make no difference what time their appointment is. They're going to be late, aren't they? Amen? It's just the way some people are. They're going to be late. I remember when we was in Mexico. And uh, the Mexican people have a whole different outlook on life. I mean, they just don't get too excited about life. And, you know, we'd have an appointment to go see somebody. And I'd be looking and I'd think, it's time to go. And I'd be, come on guys, let's go, let's go, it's time to go, we're supposed to be somewhere. Oh, don't worry about it, we'll get there. Well, they might get there an hour later or so, you know, it's it just a normal thing for them. Listen, I'm here to tell you, you're going to keep an appointment, you're going to have two appointments you're going to keep, and you're not going to be late for them. You're not going to put them off any way, shape, or form. When the time comes for you to meet that appointment, you'll be at that appointment. And that appointment is one of them, is a, a time appointed unto man to die. And the other appointment will be the judgment. Those two appointments you will keep and you will not be late for. Amen. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went, where he went, whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself conceived, received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of her child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even unto one and him as good as dead, so maybe so many as the stars of the sky in the multitude and as the sand which by the seashore innumerable. It's talking about Abraham and Sarah. Remember that God promised Abraham a son and they were uh, old and Sarah was past her age of bearing children. But you know what? She, she bore a son. Because God had said she's going to bear a son. She laughed when the angel was talking to Abraham and said, Your wife's going to have a child. She laughed. And then she denied laughing, but she did laugh. She thought, Here I'm an old woman, past the age of childbearing. I'm going to tell you what, she had a child. 
And I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but I've thought about this many times. Abraham was commanded to God, from God, to take that child and offer him as a sacrifice. I have thought many times about that because I thought, how could he do that? Take that child and be willing to put him on the on the altar and offer him. I don't know how that was in Abraham's heart to do that. I don't think he wanted to do it, I'm, I'm sure of that. But yet, he was willing to obey God to the point that he would have put his own son that he was waiting for all these years, he would have put his son on the altar. I don't know, church, if I'm getting through to you today, but I'm trying to say to you, Sometimes you have to have it in your heart. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to serve God. Amen. I'm going to serve God. If it costs me my life, I'm going to serve God. You see, there were... There were there have been people down through the ages that gave up their life because they would not deny that God was real. I'm going to say this to you, church, for somebody to have that faith. They're going to have to have some type of relationship with God for their faith to grow. You don't accept God one day and have that kind of faith the next. You hear me? You don't accept God one day and, and have the kind of faith, unless God has done some type of a miracle in your life, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying God can't, but most generally, you accept God and you begin a growing process. And you begin to grow and God begins to take you through and show you and prove to you that he is God. And it's because that God has proven to you time after time after time that he is God. That you can come into these places, these kind of places that I'm talking about. These trials and tests that you're going through, you can come into them. And you can say... Yes, God, I put my trust in you. I, I was just thinking, my sister, 20 years ago, 21, they diagnosed her with cancer and gave her not too long to live. She's still here today. That's a miracle. You know, I'm here to tell you something. We have this great cloud of witnesses in the Bible. And God did miraculous things in their lives. And I'm here to tell you He's still doing miraculous things. Just I was thinking about that this morning. That baby that, that that young couple said was still alive. He did a miraculous thing there. Diana, he's done a miraculous thing there. God is still doing miracles. And sometimes, church, we have little things that we face and we can't even believe God to, to take us through that. Somehow, God is trying to grow us into a place where we can believe that He's a miraculous God, that He can do miraculous things. 
I don't know what you're facing today, all of you. But I look out over this congregation today and I can almost, I can see people. And some of you, I know what you're facing, some of it. I don't know it all, but I know some of it. And I know sometimes it gets hard to keep your, your mind on God, to keep believing that God's going to do something in your life for you. I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. But I don't have all the answers. But I do know this. And that is that God is real. And whether or not he does that thing that you need for him to do in your life or not, he's still real. And somehow, I hate this because I'm preaching to myself, somehow we have to trust God. Sometimes we just got to put our trust in God. I believe it was Job said, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. I said that this week, but I don't know that I had the convincing voice that Job had. You hear me? I don't know that I was as convincing as Job was. But I hope somehow in my heart that I can have the faith that I can say, God, if you slay me, I will still serve you. When we stop and think about it, what choice do we really have? What choice do we really have? We have got to serve God. No matter what's going on in our life, we've got to serve God. I'm going to, I think I'm going to quit there today, church. I want you to be encouraged no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're seeing in your life. I would even say this, even if everything looks like it's lost, put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Amen. I want to pray for you today, church. Father, I pray today that you would be with each and every one this coming week, Father, the things that they're facing, the, the uncertainties in life, Father. I ask that you would um, bolster their faith, Father, to a point where they just come to a place where they say at heart, in their heart, Lord, I believe. Bless thou my unbelief. Lord, I want to put my trust in you. Help me. And God, I, I ask you just to to give them strength, Father, as they're facing the things of life. To, to bolster their faith, Father. To, to speak to them. To just to uh, take them through these trials and tests that they're facing, Father. And let them know that you'll bring them out the other side. In Jesus' name.